Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and what you're seeing right here is not just a regular Xbox 360. This is, of course, a hard-modded Xbox 360, meaning a RGH, a JTAG, or something along those lines that allows you to run unsigned code. And this here is some footage that I am not deceiving you with, but this is one of those modified Xbox 360s with me playing Gears of War 2 using a DualSense controller wirelessly. This is all on the system itself with help from an adapter and a patch that we're going to be covering here. This topic is actually something that's been brought to my attention many times over the years, but now I'm making a video on it showing you all how you can expand your horizons and use different controllers on the Xbox 360, hopefully using most controllers out there that are compatible with X input. This is going to require a few things. It is going to require a hard modded Xbox 360, meaning that you can run unsigned code. Simply having a retail or even a flashed system is not enough for this. We're also going to need a USB drive on hand to transfer some files to and from our computer that we're going to be downloading, and we're also going to need some extra controllers on hand, as well as an adapter. Now, do keep in mind here that this is not something that can just be natively done on the console itself. Due to how the Xbox 360 is set up, we are going to need a little bit of help from an adapter. And there's many different adapters out there that you can use, but the ones that have been recommended, which I'm going to be using, are these Mayflash adapters. Now, you can use something such as the Magic NS or the Magic NS2, which is what I have. But do keep in mind, this one will limit you to wired controllers only, meaning that even if you have a wireless controller, you must hook it up through a USB cable. Or you could try something such as the Magic NS Lite, which allows you to use wireless controllers well wirelessly. I am going to cover the both of them in this video here with a few controllers on hand. I also, of course, do like to give credit where credit is due, and here we're just going to be using the text guide over on console mods about using modern controllers with the Xbox 360. This is all thanks to USBD Sec Patch. Now, there's two methods of doing this here. You could either use a plugin within Dash Launch, or you can patch the NAND itself. And we're going to be doing the second option here, which is patching the NAND. Not only this does allow you to update your system if you haven't already done so, but on top of that, this ends up being a little more permanent, I guess you can say, since you are flashing it and patching it directly to the NAND. Although the nice thing is, if for some reason you run into an issue with this later on, or if you want to remove this patch, you can always remove it with another NAND flash. No issues there. Do keep in mind, however, there might be some limitations. Like it says here, certain controller adapters and projects do not accurately support X input. So this is going to be good for a good amount of controllers, but every single controller is not going to work. It also states you might have issues trying to use more than one custom controller or adapter, so keep that in mind. With that, however, I am going to have this linked down below in the description, as well as a few downloads we're going to need for this. So make sure if you're at your computer, you have your USB drive already on hand. We're going to need to download two things. First of all, we're going to need to download JRunner with extras. This here, you just need to come to the latest build of it and download JRunner with extras and save it somewhere you can easily find it if you do not already have this. Second, we're going to need the simple 360 NAND flasher. You can just click on it here and then you can download it from this download link right here. Again, save it somewhere you can easily find it. And finally, if you need an extraction software, I would recommend 7-Zip for this. It's free, easy enough to use, and you just need to download and install the build that'll work for your system. First of all, let's go ahead and prepare our USB drive. For this, if you're using an Xbox 360, which of course you will need to, you are going to need to make sure your USB drive has been formatted to FAT32. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of this here because if you've used a modded 360 for any amount of time, you should know how to set this up. But in case you need to, make sure you back up any data you might care about off the drive. If you do need to format it, keep in mind this will wipe all that data, and then you just need to make sure it has been formatted to FAT32, and you can format it here, hit OK. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Once you have your USB drive prepared, we can go ahead and grab our download here. The first one's going to be Simple 360 NAND Flasher, in which you can right-click this archive and use 7-Zip to extract it out right here. You'll get a Simple 360 NAND Flasher folder, in which all you need to do is copy this out, go to the root of your USB drive, and paste it in. Once it's been pasted over, go back out here, right-click, and safely eject your USB drive, then take it over to your console. Once you're back over at the console, go ahead, plug in your USB drive, drive and make sure it has been recognized. Now go ahead and open up a file manager such as the one in Aurora, Freestyle, or even XEX menu. Once you're in here, go to your USB drive, 
go to symbol 360 NAND flasher and launch the default executable. Once it loads up, all you need to do is tap the X button. And once you've pressed X, you just need to wait a few moments for the NAND to dump directly to that USB drive. Looks like I have a bad block here, but that's okay because it's at least late enough in the NAND. Either way, the NAND has been dumped, so you can now press any button to exit. And once it exits out of simple 360 NAND flasher and you open Aurora backup, you should be able to just remove the USB drive. So there we go, with that done, let's go ahead, remove our USB drive and take it over to the PC. Over your computer, open up your USB drive, open up Simple360 NAND flasher, and you're going to notice the flashdump.bin, which is your NAND backup. So go ahead and keep this somewhere safe in case anything goes wrong and you have to reflash your system. And the CPU key is going to be inside of here. You can open up this text document and it's going to contain all the numbers and letters that make up your CPU key, which you'll need to paste into JRunner with X extras if it does not auto populate on your computer. Since we're talking about JRunner with extras, go ahead, grab that zip file, right click it, and extract it into its own folder. Once it's been extracted, open up the JRunner with extras folder and open up the JRunner executable. It should look like this here, where all you need to do is click on load source. Now navigate over to your USB drive, symbol 316 and flasher, and get the flashdump.bin and open it. It should automatically auto populate everything, but in case it does not, copy and paste your CPU key that you got inside of the CPU key value right here, and if you need to, click on the reload button. But if you check the key vault tab right here, you should see the sensitive information for your console. This should also bring you to the latest kernel version, as well as which type of RGH or mod your system has. For example, I know mine for a fact is a glitch to image that is RGH3, because my system is a RGH3 system. But do keep in mind, it helps out the most to know what exact mod your system has. So what I'm saying here here is make sure and verify your configuration in XE build is specific to your console that you just dumped this from. Do not blindly copy my settings right here because you might end up bricking your system. So now with the NAND loaded up, it's pretty simple to apply this patch. All you need to do is navigate over to the XE build section, click on patches, and then find USBD sec. Now go ahead and enable this right here. Once it has been selected, go back over to home. Like I said, verify your settings are correct for your system. So this is going to be the latest kernel version at the time of recording. And I know that that is also my current kernel version, but I know my system has been built with a glitch to image and is RGH3. So I don't need to change anything right here. Once that's all done, click on create XE build and wait a few seconds. Once it's been built, you now need to go to the directory that shows up in load source because that's going to contain your new new update flash.bin file. Typically, you're going to find this within the JRunner with extras folder, and you should see a folder which has the serial number for your console. Inside of here, you're going to see all of your extra information, but the one file that we do need is the upd flash.bin. Right click and copy out this file. Now navigate to a USB drive, go into simple 360 NAND flasher, and right click and paste the upd flash.bin file. Once that's been pasted over, go back out, right click and eject your USB drive. Over at your console, plug in your USB drive one more time because we are going to need to now update and flash the new NAND. For this, we just need to open up the file manager yet again, USB zero, and then go into simple 360 NAND flasher and launch the default executable. This time around, you're going to want to press A to flash your NAND with raw flash. And after you press A, you do have one more opportunity to verify this. So you can press the start button to flash your NAND. Do keep in mind, again, this can brick your system. So make sure that you have built your NAND specific to your console. If that part has been messed up, you will brick your system and you will have to open up hook up a hardware flasher and manually reflash the NAND with your last working backup. So as long as you understand that and you want to take the risk, you can press the start button on your controller to flash your NAND. Now, as you can see, I press start and this time around, thankfully it is writing faster than it is reading. So just give it a few seconds here to finish flashing the NAND. And here we go. It was able to reflash it except for one bad block, unfortunately, but we just need to wait a bit here. Now, once your console restarts, you can remove the USB drive and disconnect any other controllers that you might have. But as long as your system boots up, then congratulations, you have successfully applied the patch. At this point now, we now need to try out and hook up one of our controllers. So I'm going to show you with each of these devices right here. First of all, we can try out the Magic NS or the Magic NS2. It doesn't matter which one you use, but keep in mind this one is the wired one, meaning that you must physically connect your controller to the adapter. 
You will notice here as well, there's several different options that you can run this in, and we're going to need to run this adapter in X input mode. So what you'll need to do is take the adapter and plug it into any of the USB ports on your Xbox 360, hopefully one that is more accessible. Once it has been plugged in, you should see a LED light pop up. You are going to have to cycle through the options here and get to the green LED or whichever LED represents X input. So all you need to do is hold down that button for a few seconds at a time and it will switch between modes until you finally get to X input. And once you get to X input, it should match with the color, mine is green, and you should also see a player one LED indicator pop up on your Xbox 360. If so, that means that the adapter has been recognized. All you need to do is now take a USB cable, hook it up to your controller, and hook it up to the adapter. And if all has worked properly, then you should be able to use that controller on your console in a wired mode, and you should be able to navigate the menus and play games on your system. So congratulations, you're now able to use a different wired controller. In my example here, I'm actually using a DualShock 4 that I've hooked up through a micro USB cable. Now, if you have the Magic NS Lite or something similar, it's pretty much the same as what we just saw. Like I said, you are going to have to get this into X input mode. So plug it into your console and then keep holding down the button for a few seconds at a time to cycle between modes. You'll be able to tell from this on the LED itself, and on my model here, the green LED represents X input, but make sure you reference the guide that is on your adapter itself. Once it is in X input mode, just like before, you should see there is a player one LED indicator that pops up on your RF board on the console, meaning that the Magic NS Lite has been recognized. Once it's been recognized, you now need to sync up a wireless controller and this is where it's going to differ for every controller. Now I've tried two of them on the Magic NS Lite. The first example here I'm going to use is with the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. What you need to do is now tap the button on the Magic NS Lite. Once you tap it, the LED should start flashing rapidly. And if you're using something such as the Pro Controller right here, you need to hold down the sync button on it for a few seconds. Once it is in sync mode, give it a few seconds and let it connect to the Magic NS Lite. And once it has been connected, you'll notice that your controller and the adapter have a solid LED indicator on them. From here, you can test out your controller and make sure that the buttons are registering on your system. I'll even show it again here with the DualSense, which is slightly different if you've tried to sync up PlayStation controllers before. For this, you need to make sure the controller is off, and to get it into syncing mode, again, tap the button on the Magic NS Lite, and then on the DualSense, you need to hold down the share button, and while holding it down, begin to hold down the PS button. After a few seconds, the controller's LEDs should start rapidly flashing, and at that point, just leave it alone for a few seconds and let it connect to the adapter. And once it has been connected to the adapter, just like before, you can now see that it is working. I was even able to play this game of Gears of War here successfully. And do keep in mind that this is now paired to that adapter. So in the future, unless you change controllers, if you want to use this controller right from the get-go, all you need to do is plug in your adapter, turn on the controller, and it should be connected. Now I've shown you all off screen just to show that the controller was connected and working, and if anybody is still thinking it's fake, well one, go ahead and give it a shot, it does work thankfully, and two, I'll tell you this, admittedly, I am not the most creative person, and making a video like this and faking it would be a lot more effort for me that I don't really want to put into, as opposed to showing a real patch, and this actually working with a real controller and a real adapter. You can see right here I am playing I Made a Game with Zombies in it, and I'm trying this with the DualSense itself, and it is working incredibly well. It's nice, it's comfortable, and brings a nice little modern flair, I guess you can say, to the Xbox 360 itself. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped you all out. Hopefully you're able to get some more mileage out of your console using additional controllers on it. And while the Xbox 360 controller is still one of my favorite, if not my favorite controller, thankfully you can now resort to using other controllers just in case you cannot get a hold of one or your old one might not be in the best shape. There's plenty of reasons for having this, so it's a nice patch to definitely run on here. Either way, that is about it for this video. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.